My name is Ned Amendola, and I'm here today with uh, Dr. Penna Physical. Uh, I work at Duke, and I've worked together with Penna for the last uh, 13 or 14 years at the University of Iowa. And uh, we're going to talk today on the gastrosoleus recession. Um, so, Pennant, you, know, you know you were you were really kind of the person that got introduced me to this. Um, you know, I've been doing open gastrosoleus recession for like the last 20 years until you brought the endoscopic technique. And uh, I think it is really a, a huge improvement in what we're doing for our patients. Thank you for uh, teaching me and, and allowing me to uh, get engaged in this technique. Oh, thanks for teaching me for the last uh, 15, 20 years. And so I appreciate that. So this is actually something that I'm really excited about. It actually brought in uh, improvement in my patient care and results. And we can do something that comparing to big incisions and uh, a lot of dissection and difficulty in doing surgery to make it a really minimally invasive and then fast recovery. No, I, I think it's great. So, you know, a lot of surgeons do gastrosoleus release along with a lot of foot and ankle surgery. You know, it, it just seems to be a little tedious to be able to, you know, do the gastrosoleus release with the patient in the supine position. And I think the endoscopic technique really brings a, a unique advantage. So when do you decide to do a gastrosoleus release in these patients? This surgery is probably the most common surgery I do. Uh, we have a lot of issues with patients overloading in the midfoot, in the forefoot, uh, charcoal arthropathy, uh, arthritis in the midfoot, ankle contracture, variety of patients, including plantar fasciitis, this recalcitrant to treatment, also Achilles tendinopathy as well. So a lot of varieties of it issues that we run into in patient population are actually stem from gastrocnemius contracture. And how do you decide to do a gastroc release versus, you know, a lot of surgeons do an Achilles tenotomy or Hoke tenotomy or an Achilles release? So we know from biomechanical study that if we release the tendon substance itself in the distal part of the tendon, uh, or we call tendo Achilles lengthening, that actually weaken the whole muscle unit uh, so much. A gastrocnemius recession can release the tightness component of it without compromising strength. Very few, less than 3% of the patient complain or have symptoms about weakness. Well, I, I've noticed uh, when switching over to this endoscopic technique that um, the cosmesis, you know, after the surgery, the patient's calf looks a lot better. There's no indentation from the incision. And uh, I think the recovery from the surgery is much better. Do you allow these uh, to mobilize a lot quicker versus an open release? Uh, absolutely, usually, if we do this surgery uh, as an isolated procedure, I would let them walk right away in the boot. They can get out of the boot for exercise. They can uh, wean off the boot at four to six weeks. Of course, if we need to do this in conjunction with other things, it would depend on you know, if we want to protect the osteotomy or fusion as well or not. But on its own, this thing is very re easy to recover and we don't restrict uh, the activity very much at all. I think the instrumentation provided in this endoblade kit uh, really makes the surgery very straightforward and very easy with the cannula, the dissector, and the blades. You know, it's, it's very simple. Nonetheless, you know, I think people are concerned about possible complications. How do the complications of the open surgery versus the endoscopic uh, compare? Actually, complication exists in both endoscopic and open technique. For the cerebral nerve injury, for example, open surgery has the risk of 5%. With our series, we look into this, and the uh, rate of injury was 3%. But in the last two to three years that we developed the new technique, I haven't had any cerebral nerve symptoms at all. Instrumentation to release the tendon is not hard, but to get it released precisely, safely, avoiding nerve injury is the key. So our technique, we need to make sure we can identify the correct plan to be able to adjust and navigate ourselves to the correct plan without risking nerve injuries. And in terms of outcome, you know, what, what do you expect then from the gastrosoleus recession, you know, in terms of improvement in motion and your examination before and after with the patient? We would like to allow patients to be able to dorsiflex to 10 degrees so that it's easier for them to walk during their daily activities. Um, in the surgery itself, when we do the release, we aim to get about 15 degrees dorsiflexion and at the end, results usually they can regain to about 10 degrees at the end. I, th I think it's, uh, it's really an advantage and I think it's an improvement in the technique that I certainly was using as an open technique. 
I think the endoscopic technique uh, is, is really uh, something we can all learn as surgeons. So I hope that uh, you know all these surgeons that have been doing the open releases will take a look at it and see how how it can improve their uh, results in these patients. So, so talking about your experience you know, of 20 years of doing open, uh, when you switched to endoscopic technique, uh, how was it for you? Uh, do you have any uh, you know t tips and tricks that you want to do at all? Well, you know, I, I, I did a lot of arthroscopy as part of my sports medicine foot and ankle practice. But, you know, when you do a technique, the same technique for many, many years, it's kind of hard to say, well, there's a better way of doing it because you know how to do it, you know how to get it done quickly. And, uh, but I can honestly say that uh, doing it endoscopically, it's much safer and it's much quicker. And, and the reason being is that you visualize the whole fascia that you're releasing from medial to lateral. You're not trying to look at the fascia, trying to use retractors to see the lateral part of the fascia. Uh, you don't have to dissect out the sural nerve um, because you can actually visualize the sural nerve. So I, I think in terms of, of uh, using the arthroscope to visualize, you can just see much further and much better for a much longer distance than using an incision. So. I, I, you know, I, I switched over and I, I think it's better, even though I thought I had kind of perfected the technique that I used. Well, Pinnett, uh, it's been nice having this conversation with you and uh, thank you for bringing this new technique to light and uh, educating us about the endoscopic technique. Likewise, Ned, I appreciate your teaching all along for me. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah.